Hi, my name is Bloodfish, and welcome to yet again the start of a new series. Yes, I know it's very ambitious of me to like start two separate series at the same time, but like whatever. Uh, this series, I'll be focusing on explaining different redstone circuits, so like the monostable circuit or the double piston extender, and I'll be following a general format to these explanation videos. So like we'll start off with like how the circuit works, and then we can go on to how we can apply these circuits to different situations in survival or in bigger machines. And finally, like, we have different iterations or versions of the same circuit, but just built differently. So, for the first video, we'll focus on the automatic dropper circuit. Let's get started. Now for a simple explanation on how the automatic dropper circuit works. So, first of all, we put items into this dropper, and so it will immediately spell an item. I'll explain why this is significant later on. Anyways, like after we put items into this dropper, then like the comparator will detect this and hard power this block. This hard powered block will power all adjacent components, being these two redstone dots. This redstone dot will soft power this block, which will quasi power this um, dropper, which will stay quasi powered because this comparator is constantly updating this dropper. This redstone dot is soft powering this block, which then the repeater will be able to get an output from this block and send it directly into the side of this comparator. Now the main function of this comparator is to compare the two signals from the side and the back. If the signal from the side is greater than the signal at the back, then the whole uh, then the comparator will switch off. When this happens, the whole system shuts down, and so like the uh, signal from the back will be stronger than the signal at the side, which would be zero because it's switched off, and so therefore the like the whole system boots up again and like continues like a clock. Now for the reason why we have to immediately spit out an item for this whole circuit to work. So if you look over here, this is a full dropper with all 9 stacks of sandstone. And this has a full signal strength of 15. If we just count that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. However, if we just lose one item, like we spit out one item at the start, you can see that the signal will drop down to 14, which will be like weaker than the max signal strength 15 and 14 so that's why like if we just immediately remove an item here then like the dropper will always have a weaker signal strength than the repeater over here 15 and 14 so therefore the comparator will switch off and then the whole system switches off again and just like the cycle repeats and that's why we have to remove an item how do we build this automatic dropper circuit well just start with the dropper over here comparator a block and then three red pieces of redstone dust like this and then a repeater over here and two pieces of wool I seem to have missed one out yet yeah, here and uh, that's how you make it and also on a separate note I forgot to mention but uh, you can adjust the timing at which this dropper spits out items like by adjusting this uh, repeater this is like kind of important in different like applications so like I'll explain why this is important later on here are some examples of the automatic dropper circuit being used in larger systems or in a survival mode context. So, for our first example, you can see that this automatic dropper system is being used as an item elevator in a storage system. So, if we just put some items into this item elevator, you may see that because the dropper is dispensing items really quickly, then some items may get caught or stuck and the hoppers won't be able to collect them, just like that. This is because of two reasons. One, of course, because like the dropper is dispensing items too quickly. And two, because the hopper can only receive one item every four redstone ticks. So, of course, like with a rapid dispensing speed and the hopper can't co keep up with that speed. So it just can't collect the item. But how do we fix this? We just have to set this uh, circuit to have a longer delay. So now it has a delay of two. And so we set it to four ticks of delay. And so it can like keep up with the hoppers. So again, we just try this again even though it's going to be a lot slower it's something you have to sacrifice if you want to make your storage systems a lot more efficient in like collecting items and sorting them efficiently so if you just wait a while you can see that all the items go into their respective chests that's eight items over here six seven seven eight and eight just like that so all the items have been have gone into the chest in our second example, we would need a sugarcane farm or like any type of farm, and the automatic dropper circuit is being used as a medium to transport the harvested sugarcane into a water stream. So if you just harvest this sugarcane, then you can see that I mean there's nothing really spectacular with this, and then we just collect it. I mean there's a lot of loss on the edges, but who cares? You can see that uh, minecarts collect it, and then like it's emptied into this dropper, which will send them into a water stream, which will probably be going into a storage system like that or something so that's like another use 
On to the last two applications for the automatic dropper circuit. So our third example would be a trash bin, where if you just put some trash, aka my grades, into this trash bin, you can see that it's going to get ejected really quickly into lava, because it's automatic. However, I don't really recommend using this because if you like accidentally place something valuable, like like some diamond chest plate or something, into this, it gets ejected really quickly. Yeah, like just like that, you just got ejected really quickly, and you won't be able to retrieve it. So you don't use this, just like dig a hole and throw your items into it and let it despawn or something. I don't really recommend using it, but it is still a use, so I just like to share it. And then our final application for the circuit would be to automatically fire projectiles such as arrows or fire charges. I uh, guess it's not really fast, but at least it's still a use that we can use it for. You don't have to flick a lever or something. So yeah, it's good. And finally, different versions of the automatic dropper circuit. In 3L, the first circuits presented here, and also the traditional circuit over there, there's a general trend. This trend being that a comparator will take the contents of a nearby dropper or dispenser, which will then fire a signal to a clock, either being an observer clock, a repeater clock, or a comparator clock over there, and will power the dropper. This dropper will then like spit out items, because it's being powered by a clock, like that. Now the benefit of the first circuit is that it's one block wide, so it's relatively compact, and it's also very easy to build. You can see like how it's built really easily, <laughs> like that. Our second circuit is a more permanent solution because the observer clock will be on at all times, like this. So if you play Minecraft with sound on, there's going to be this really annoying dispenser failed noise, will, which will get really annoying. So either you can just like turn off the um, circuit once you've finished, but it wouldn't be an automatic, it would be a manual dropper circuit, or just like turn off the sound in the pause menu, like there, yeah. Anyways, on to the third circuit, which uses a repeater clock. This repeater clock is significantly bulkier than like any of these two designs, because I'm not too sure how to make one that's compact, but you can still use it for either for inspiration, or if you don't have a second observer to spare. Like that. And the final circuit is similar to the first circuit, but now instead of being one block wide, it's one block tall. Like this. That you can like see a really clear cycle of how the comparator detects items from the dropper which will power the clock which powers the dropper like a cycle so yeah four different methods to build an automatic dropper circuit and thus we reached the very end of the first video for the circuit series i hope you enjoyed it learned something and if you have any comments or questions please leave them down in the comments below i'll see if i can answer them uh just ignore the dispenser failed noises in the background they're just here to prove my point anyways uh see you next time bye bye